Hello everyone, and welcome back to Bioscholar. Let's dive into the fascinating world of nervous tissues. Did you know that when you touch a hot surface or get pricked by a pin, you instantly pull your hand or foot away? That quick response isn't magic. It's the work of nervous tissue, silently coordinating every action to protect and guide your body. Today's video, I'm going to break down everything you need to know about the nervous tissues, clearly, simply, and in a way you'll never forget. So stay tuned, and let's make this topic crystal clear. So, what are nervous tissues? Nervous tissue is one of the four basic types of animal tissues. The other three are epithelial tissue, connective tissue, and muscle tissue. Nervous tissue is behind everything you do, whether it's blinking your eyes, solving a math problem, writing an answer, or even memorizing a definition. These tissues aren't just a part of your body, they run your entire life. Now, let's note down the proper definition. Nervous tissue is a specialized tissue found in animals, made up of cells that can receive, transmit, and process electrical and chemical signals. Sounds a bit heavy, right? Don't worry, let's break it down. The first part. Nervous tissue is basically made up of cells that can receive signals, process them, and then pass them on to the next cell. Simple as that. Now for the second part. These tissues work using two types of signals. First, electrical signals. These are like tiny charges, just like electricity flowing through wires. And second, chemical signals. These are molecules that carry messages between nerve cells. And here's a key point. When we talk about chemical signals in nervous tissue, we're usually talking about neurotransmitters. These include chemicals like dopamine, GABA, acetylcholine, and many more. These neurotransmitters are the body's natural messengers, helping your brain and body stay in sync. But how these signals work? Let's find out. Electrical signals pass from one end of the nerve cell to another. This happens within the same neuron. But when the signal needs to jump to the next cell, that's where chemical signals come in. At the end of a neuron, electrical signals trigger the release of chemicals. These chemicals travel across a small gap between two nerve cells, called a synapse. So here's the flow. Electrical signal travels inside the neuron. At the end, it switches to a chemical signal. That chemical crosses the synapse. Then it triggers a new electrical signal in the next neuron. This back and forth between electrical and chemical signals is what keeps your brain and body communicating 24-7. The main components of nervous tissue are neurons and neuroglia. Neurons are the basic unit of the nervous system. Each neuron consists of dendrites, a cell body, axon, and the axon terminal. Neurons are responsible for generating and transmitting electrical impulses. But here's a twist. Neurons can't do it alone. This is where neuroglia come in, also known as glial cells. They act like the support staff of the nervous system. Different types of glial cells, each with its own job are astrocytes, oligodendrocytes, Schwann cells, microglia, and ependymal cells. So, in simple words, neurons generate the electrical impulses, and neuroglia help them do it efficiently and safely. But did you know how they are organized in our body? Nervous tissues are found throughout the entire body, from head to toe. They are organized into two major systems, central nervous system or CNS, and peripheral nervous system or PNS. Let's start with the CNS, the central nervous system. This is the command center of your body. It's where all the major decisions are made. The CNS has two main parts. First, the brain, which controls thoughts, memory, emotions, and coordination. And second, spinal cord, which acts like a highway, carrying signals to and from the brain and the rest of the body. Both the brain and spinal cord are made mostly of neurons and neuroglia, tightly packed together. To protect these delicate structures, they're surrounded by protective layers and enclosed within bones. The brain is protected by the skull and the spinal cord is protected by the vertebral column. Now let's look at the second part, the peripheral nervous system, or PNS. 
The PNS is like a vast network of cables spread all over the body. These cables are what we call nerves. These nerves come out of the brain and spinal cord, and based on where they come from, we name them as cranial nerves and spinal nerves. The peripheral nervous system operates through two major divisions. Let's see how each one works. First, the sensory division. We call it sensory because it senses changes in the environment. It starts at receptors. When a receptor detects a stimulus, it sends a nerve impulse to the CNS. After the CNS receives and processes the impulse, it sends a response message back. This is where the motor division comes in. It delivers the message to the effectors. I'll explain these terms in the next part. But for now, this is the big picture of how nervous tissue is organized. This is the summary. Feel free to take a screenshot for quick revision. Till now, you've got a rough idea of what nervous tissue does in the body. Now let's understand how it actually works, using a simple, everyday example. Throughout our body, neurons have nerve endings in the skin. These special areas are called receptors. For example, in your fingers, these receptors are always on the lookout for changes in the environment. Now, when something changes, let's say you touch a hot surface, that change is called a stimulus. The receptors detect this stimulus, receive it, and immediately send a message. This message is called a nerve impulse. What happens next? This nerve impulse travels from the receptors toward the CNS, through the sensory division of the PNS. Once it reaches the central nervous system, the CNS analyzes the situation and quickly decides how to respond. It then sends a response message, another nerve impulse, through the motor division. This impulse reaches the effectors, the parts of your body that will now take action. In this case, your muscles are the effectors, and they instantly pull your hand away. So this is how nervous tissue helps you survive, react, and stay safe within milliseconds. Now that you've seen the reflex arc in action, you can imagine just how vital nervous tissues are for our survival. But what makes them truly exceptional? Look at these. They are electrically excitable that means they are capable of transmitting signals at lightning speed across long distances in the body. They're made of highly specialized cells that, once damaged, rarely regenerate, that kind of precision doesn't come cheap. They combines electrical and chemical messaging to coordinate every thought, reflex, and movement in real time. Nervous tissue isn't just a part of the body, it's the network that powers every thought, action, and reaction. From sensing danger to making memories, it keeps you connected to the world. But did you know not all neurons are the same, and they don't all function the same way either? To learn about the different types of neurons and their roles, Click on the video or check the link in the description. I'll see you there.